ವರ್ಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನಂ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾಧನಾಂಬುಜಂ ಪೂಜಿತ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಗಣಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಓಡ್ ಬಿಲ್ ಔಟ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜೆ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ನಾಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ when bhagwan swaminarayan himself manifested on this earth at that time he also brought from aksardham many many divine muktas along uh, not only santos but even many devotees also came with him from aksardham and they live such a life such a devoted life uh, by observing by like studying their lives we can understand how to live uh according to bhagwan's uh, like commands or we can say according to his wishes so that's why we should refer such a divine lives of devotees as well as santos so that by uh observing by studying their lives we can understand the real meaning of our spiritual life as well as how we can please our beloved bhagwan and our beloved sadguru so today we are going to listen something about jinabai's life jinabai was born in 1792 his father was thakur manuba uh, he was a darbar and a descendant of the great king sidraj jaisi so he was from rajput caste and when uh, and they were like uh, from a royal family so they also ruled over like two villages like panchada and the uh, another one when jinabai was 10 years old his father thakur manuba a disciple of ramanand swami received both uh, ramanand swami and nilkanthwani in his uh, village panchada so from the time of jinabai's father meaning from the time of manuba thakur they were the disciples the whole family disciples of ramanand swami and we know at the time of ramanand swami the whole reason of sorat they believed like ramanand swami as the form of bhagwan so this thakur manuba and entire his family they were become a devotee of ramanand swami and uh, when jinabai was 10 years old so at the time ramanand swami and nilkanthwani visited that panchada because of their invitation and they stay even there in the darbar of manuba so during this visit jinabai received ramanand swami's blessings for the first time and also he got a darshan of nilkanthwani after ramanand swami passed away jinabai was drawn towards riji maharaj by maharaj miracles along with jinabai his mother and sister gangaba and adiba also soon become devotees of bhagwan swami narayan so after raman swami is passing away to aksardham this entire family become a devotees of bhagwan swami narayan jinabai had a great liking for satsang though being born and brought up amidst the luxury of royal family he had a deep disla- dislike for material pleasures in fact he saw nothing other than misery even in the best of the sense pleasures and to please maharaj he strictly followed the vows of satsang he lived a simple life constantly fearing that his love for maharaj could at any time drift elsewhere seeing his constant awareness maharaj often used to praise him so even after just as uh, we know the life of sevlal said who was also like a only child of the millionaire father in the same way here uh, in the life of jinabai he was also like a son of wealthy father but still even though he had all kind of like luxury and everything reputation and everything still 
he didn't believe in those things meaning he understood all those things like reputations wealth property money everything like even um uh meaning everything were like uh one day become uh destroy one day uh according to the time everything would be destroyed and so he understanding in this way he only focused on the form of bhagwan and he had too much affection for maharaj and he always remained uh like cons- conscious about his mind like uh anyhow he could not uh forget maharaj's form or he could not like attach in any other objects in this world or any person so because of his awareness maharaj also become pleased upon him and he also many time praise him this is what jina bai's uh like early period in satsang and gradually he also as a satsangi he also engage more and more in satsang and uh, attach himself with the santo and uh, because of the association of santo of bhagwan swami narayan he also get like uh, wisdoms of satsang meaning how to live in satsang so because of his understanding because of his wisdom he cannot he like never falter from the path of liberation or path of uh spirituality or we can say path of satsang and he remained firm in satsang even though any kind of situation or adverse situation we can say uh happened to his life then still he remained in satsang firmly because his firm his unflinching faith in the form of bhagwan was built because of santo's uh instructions or we can say because of his association with the santo and that's why his faith remained unmoved and we can say stable even in any kind of situation happened to his life moreover a large portion of jinabai's income was spent for satsang why because he didn't believe in any luxury or any comfort in his life even though he was from a royal family and still he didn't uh, enjoy anything and even he spent most of his income for the uh development of satsang or we can say the growth of satsang moreover the greatness of maharaj's fellowship was firm in jinabai's mind and so he would always help other devotees uh other santos and would not be a tax or even thoughts of their bad qualities and would take their side even at the cost of his life so that was the one foremost qualities of jinabai's life like he always remain in on the side of bhagwan and his devotees even though the devotees caste m- might be low or the devotees may be poor no matter but he always takes their side and always help the other devotees and santo so that bhagwan automatically become pleased upon him why because he helped the other devotees and even he serves the other devotees so by his life we can say even bhagwan would not uh, like bhagwan not become pleased upon someone who directly serve him but bhagwan become pleased upon someone who along with his service he also serve the santos and devotees so here in the life of jinabai we uh, we can easily find these uh, divine virtues of have of helping the other devotees jinabai was deeply devoted to maharaj and so he would often say uh, stay with maharaj to listen to his talks moreover he would un fallingly invite maharaj his sadhus and devotees once a year to panjara to celebrate grand festivals in hosting such festivals jinabai would spend freely indeed jinabai had dedicated his life for satsang so as a royal family uh jinabai owned many like uh, lands and property and everything and because of that he also owned like too much he earned too much income per year but he spent most of his part of his income for the 
celebration of uh, festivals and every year once a year he invite maharaj and all the santos and devotees to celebrate a grand festival in panjara so in this way he passes his time as well as his money and everything for the satsang as the trot of 1813 threaten the reason maharaj began touring everywhere to warn his devotees in advance of the coming troubles because maharaj knew and ultimately he is the all doer so he knew what will happen the next year and so he touring one place to another meaning in each and every place where the devotees lived at the time so maharaj uh inform each and every devotees and he himself advise to all the devotees please store up more and more fruit grains and even sell all of your whatever you own like cattle like uh cows bullocks whatever sold them out even horses and only collect more and more grains so according to maharaj instruction jinaba also follow uh the same what maharaj said to him and according to maharaj instruction as uh jinaba sold out uh, like his cattle and everything even as a royal family he had too much horses so he had sold out everything and according to maharaj instruction he stored up more and more fruit grains so what happened at the time of troubles once the rot heat he was able to help the other devotees as well as the poor by giving away large amount of grains how despite his generosity jinaba's farms still reaped profits so he gave extra donations in accordance with maharaj wishes moreover he asked that maharaj keep 50 sadhus at his place until the rot passed and maharaj granted his wish and jina by the sword the sadhus and benefited from their company and discourses so at the time of drought jina by uh, requested maharaj please give me 50 sadhus so that i can serve him uh, while keeping them in my village panchara because i have enough food grains and all the other facilities so maharaj granted his per, uh, request and uh 50 sadhus stay in panchara during that tough time and jinabai serve them and get benefit of their association by the by listening their discourses again jinabai requested maharaj to come to panchara and to bring with him uh along with the other devotees uh all the santos and even invite the other devotees from the far and uh meaning from very far towns and villages and maharaj refused his request and at, at the time because of that maharaj uh, jinaba as maharaj didn't came to panchara so uh, jinaba became upset and for that maharaj himself say to uh, say to him in the vachanamrut like uh one sure uh, a devotee should always remain happy even though bhagwan and santo would come to their homes or not but devotees should remain happy when bhagwan or santo would come to their home he should happy he should be happy but even by any means or by any reason if they cannot visit their town or visit their home then also one should understand in their mind like uh, different different reasons and because of that one should keep understanding in one's mind and remain happy jinabai was also like expert in managing business ventures and events so whenever maharaj hail grand yagnas or festivals jinabai would arrive he ahead of time to lead the preparations his arrangements were excellent and the events he managed were always a success jinaba was firm uh, when it came to observing his moral vows 
he would not tolerate even the slightest lapse in his observance. In fact, he was so staunch in his vows that he had won the respect of the entire Sussan. And Jinabai, not only he owned only like two villages, but he was also a high respecter um, officer in the state of Junagar. So whenever uh, like uh, he has a special like he's like he was like a special officer in the state and because of that whenever he visited Junagar so he had uh, to visit frequent time the palace of the king and there in the king's palace we know at the time the king was a Muslim so Jinabai but the Muslim king even understanding the Jinabai as a religious person he also gave him respect once he invited Jinabai and the other officers to his courtyard so at the time uh, in the palace the king king had like a, for uh, he gave a party for any reason something happened to him and so he gave a party so he invited all the officers so so Jinabai according to his duty he also visited the palace and we know at the time of uh, like Muslim rule uh, in India so they enjoy all kinds of luxuries and everything like they also use uh, alcohol and like uh, vulgar dances from the females in this way they like uh, such kind of scenes happen to king's palace so at the time even Jinabai was present there but still when such kind of things happen like the alcohol was distributed from uh, in different different glasses to all the members and when the some female came to uh, dance there so at the time Jinabai like remember Maharaj Divan Murti and close his eyes and chant on his uh, rosary like Bhagwan's holy name. So when the king himself what Jinabai was doing bhajan at the time when the other officers and all the other members present there they were all like enjoying this singing and dancing and drinking alcohol in this way all the engage in sensual pleasure and at the same time at the same place the one person he was like closing his eyes he was not like uh, listening anything or he was not watching anything and he was only engaged in his worship to Bhagwan. so when king was watching this he understood like this is a real duty of God and he is a pure he is a pious so after com con concluding all these things the king himself asked Jinabai, why are you not watching this scene and why are you not enjoying the music and not uh, drinking an alcohol? Then Jinabai explained everything about Bhagwan Swamran's rules, like uh, how he gives the vows not to drink alcohol and not to watch such kind of bad scenes. In this way, he explained everything about Maharaj rules and regulations. So by even listening, king become extremely impressed by Bhagwan's uh, rules so he announced uh, even he gave a command to Jinabai like uh, whenever I invite uh, in future whenever I will invite the all the officers and if you are present here and such kind of things happen here in our palace and if that will be according to like that will be not suit according uh, suit to you according to your religious rules so you should immediately quit this place you are allowed to quit this place so in this way he also respect for Jinabai and because of his uh, invitation and his affection for Maharaj Maharaj also visitor frequent time uh, Panchara and also like uh, celebrate many great festivals over there so once Mara decided to celebrate the Fuldor festival of 1823 in Panchara with great festivity and joy thousands of sadhus and devotees were invited to come tens of, were, tens 
of different sizes were set up all around as temporary living, uh, living arrangements for the devotees and Santo. Once they began to arrive, he served them the best of foods. Maharaj also pleased everyone with his divine talks. On the night of the full moon, the devotees went along with Maharaj to an open field on the village outskirts, and Aaron rich gold threaded clothes and beautiful ornaments, Maharaj arranged for everyone to dance in a ras. Nine circles were made, the first few being of sadhus, then the parsas, and finally of devotees. Sadhus playing the janj and brudang filled the air with rhythmic kirtans and music. So everyone's delight, Maharaj appeared in numerous forms and played ras with each and every devotees and santo. Even though there was like thousands santos and devotees, but still Maharaj also took this, that many forms and he played ras with all the devotees and santo at the same time. That was divine, uh, like divine power, or we can say the divine miracles. Uh, so, the all the uh, devotees and santo by Maharaj. So, in this way, uh, even everyone's delight Maharaj appeared in numerous forms and played ras with each and every devotees and santo, soaring them with divine blessing. They exhausted themselves dancing late into the night. So all the devotees and santo, they like on one side they enjoy dancing with Maharaj. On the other side, they become exhausted. Why? Because that was like a 2 a.m. in the morning. So the whole night they were playing grass. And because of that, they all become like exhausted. And moreover, the next day, the day of Fuldal, meaning the color festival so the devotees prepare themselves for the festival and like plenty of gular were brought and water tanks were filled with colored water and as the festival began Maharaj also began throwing handfuls of gulal on the devotees and spraying them with color water from his like pichkari he continued until the devotees were soaked. So all the devotees, all the santos, they were soaked with the color. Then Maharaj stopped to play with the colors. Maharaj then instructed the sadhus to join and so the sadhus form a team to play against the devotees. Maharaj standing atop the stage began spraying color water on everyone. After the festival, Maharaj along with the sadhus and devotees went to the river for a bath. Jinabai could not contain his joy, for Maharaj had blessed him with the opportunity to sponsor the festival. Jinabai had ar arranged a sumptuous meal for all the devotees, villagers, and even the poor from surrounding areas. And even Bhagwan Swaminar himself served uh, like plenty of ghee in a sweet dish to all the devotees, santos, as well as those who are not devotees, but very poor people who were from surrounding areas. So Maharaj even served very rich and sumptuous food to those poor people. Not only that, but even according to one of his virtues, Once Jinabai came to Mangrol, here he came to know that Kamalsi Vanja had fallen very ill and that nobody was looking after him. So Kamalsi Bai, who was like a very poor and yet a great devotee, and in his home, meaning Kamalsi Bai's home, he was only a devotee of Bhagwan Swami. And the other relatives, other family members, they were not devotees of Bhagwan. And that's why. They were not doing his like proper service or he were not like helping him. And on the other hand, Kamal Sipai was very uh, like poor and he was like seriously ill. So at the time, hearing the news that Kamal Sipai was sick, Jinabai went to see him. 
Upon seeing Jinabai, Kamalsi began crying, for it seemed as if none of Kamalsi's relatives cared for him. So Jinabai was pained to see Kamalsi's like uh, situation, and he wished to take him home with him. Yet Kamalsi was too weak to walk, so Jinabai went into town and called some laborers to lift his entire coat. He was able to find only three laborers, and so he acted as the fourth laborer. He lifted the fourth leg of the coat himself and with his free hand held his horse reins. So in this way, he even like uh, remained loyal to the devotees, not only that, but he himself lifted the fourth leg of the coat himself, even though he was like a, from a royal family and still served a very poor duty. As Jinabai and laborers came out of Kamalsi's home, they ran into one of the village leaders. Seeing Jinabai, a highly respected Darbar, lifting the coat himself, he quickly Call another laborer from the village to relieve Jinabai. Thereafter, Jinabai sat on his horse and led the laborers to his home. And upon arriving in Panchala, Jinabai asked his sister Adiba where to place Kamal Sibai's coat. Adiba did not respond as she was re repulsed at the thought of having to care for such a poor duty. Ignoring his sister, Jinabai had Kamal Sibai's coat placed in his own room and he served him day and night, washing his clothes, feeding him food, and serving him with great care. Then he took of even himself. Once Kamal Sibai had a severe headache, and so Jinabai asked his sister for some black pepper as medicine. Then Adiba, Jinabai's sister, he said, we don't have any in the house. A few days later, when Jinabai had a headache, Adiba brought some black paper for him. So at the time, Jinabai asked, where did, he, where did this paper came from? Then Adiba said, there was some left in the house. Then Jinabai uh, immediately spoke like uh, there was no papers available when, there, uh, when they were needed for Kamal Sibai and today they have been found. So in this way Jinabai became like upset with his sister and he went tossed the bottle of paper outside and stopped speaking to his sister. So even when Maharaj came to know that Jinabai had lifted poor Kamal Sibai's coat and had served him with great love, he came to Panchara and hugged him seven times and became extremely pleased upon Jinabai. So this is what Jinabai's life and he's like, even, even though he was from royal family, he was a king and he was a, a respected and senior officer in the state of Junagar, still he served a very humble and poor fam, uh, poor duty of Bhagwan. So in this way, when Jinabai, uh, once Maharaj asked Jinabai, what's your wish, what's your last wishes? Then Jinabai requested, Maharaj, I don't have any like materialistic wishes in my heart, but I requested you if you construct a grand temple here in Junagar so that the, everyone can get the benefit of having darshan and uh, the association of santo. So please grant me this, uh, grant me this for make, uh, to make here the grand temple. So according to his wishes, Maharaj also built one of six temple in Junagar and also kept such a great sant like that of Gunaditan and Swami so that the entire satsang of Sorat can get benefit of association of the Santo. So in this way, after completing his duty and everything in satsang, only because of Maharaj basis and in the presence of Maharaj, physical presence of Maharaj near him, Jinabai was sent to Aksardam by Maharaj himself.
and that was the date of 16 December 1828. So on that day, Maharaj himself sent a Jinabai into his divine Akshardham. And Maharaj himself gave a shoulder to Jinabai's uh, beer. Why? Because he had left uh, one of his devotees court and because of that Maharaj himself lifted Jinabai's beer. Even Maharaj had not given his shoulder to leave the beer of his younger brother Icharambai. So that was the great quality of Jinabai. Like Bhagwan himself become uh, become pleased upon him and even he himself lifted his uh, funeral uh, for his uh, his Jinabai's beer for his funeral rites. So in this way Jinabai left his mortal body in the presence of Bhagwan. So by uh, this unmatchable life of Jinabai we can say uh, we can understand in our life that we should also live in such a way, such a devoted life, so that Bhagwan would become pleased upon us. And finally, we will also enjoy the same bliss just as Jinabai is experiencing the divine bliss in divine Aksardam. In the same way, if we serve the devotees, if we live in live very humbly in this satsang, then we will also uh, attain the same divine Aksardam. By saying this, Jai Swaminarayan Sri Ganesham Maharajani